Welcome to video three in the Jiprock DIY series. In videos one and two, you've seen how to plan your project, handle and measure and cut Jiprock plasterboard. Now you're ready to start the installation process. Jiprock plasterboard is installed using a combination of adhesive and mechanical fixing. And in this video, we'll give you a good overview of the installation process for standard ceilings and walls. There are some areas in the home that require special installation procedures. These include wet areas, tiled areas, garages and exterior ceilings. For detailed installation instructions for these areas, download a copy of the Jiprock Residential Installation Guide available at jiprock.com.au. As with all DIY projects, make sure you have safety glasses, gloves and a dust mask handy. You could also consider hearing protection if you'll be working in a loud environment. As well as your safety gear, you'll need Jiprock stud adhesive to glue the board to the joists and studs, a 38mm broad knife to apply the adhesive, a hammer or cordless screwdriver. If you have a timber frame, 30mm ring shank nails or Type W 32mm coarse thread screws. For a steel frame, use number 6 Type S needle point or drill point screws depending on the frame thickness a working platform and ladder to reach the ceiling and the top of walls. Small offcuts of board to use as packers to keep the board off the floor. You may also want to consider a plasterboard lifter to make installing the ceiling boards easier. Any corners that project into the room are finished with external angle corner beads which are available in metal or PVC. If you are using metal corner beads you'll need tin snips for cutting the bead staple gun and staples to hold the angles in place this works for both timber and steel frames or if you don't have a staple gun handy you can use nails and a hammer for timber frames only PVC corner bead is generally more resilient than metal bead and less likely to dent on impact it's also recommended for use in wet areas these are a bit trickier to install as they are adhered to the plasterboard edges using Jiprock base coat before applying the jointing system Okay, let's get started. If you're installing both the walls and ceiling of a room, it's always best to start with the ceiling to reduce the possibility of damage later on. The installation process is pretty much the same for timber and steel frames, with some different specification for fasteners and fixing points. This video shows a timber frame installation. For more details about steel frame installation, refer to the Jiprock Residential Installation Guide at jiprock.com.au. Jiprock ceiling boards are installed with the long side at right angles to the joists. Where there is a change of direction in the frame, you may need to fit some trimmers to fix to. The boards are adhered to the joist using stud adhesive and fixed with screws or nails at the edges and the centre of the board to hold the board against the adhesive. First up, you need to check your joists are straight and aligned without gaps or bulges and are no more than 600 millimeters apart. Plane back or pack out any uneven members and pull out or hammer down any protruding nails. Make sure the surface is clean and free of dirt or grease that might affect the bond with the stud adhesive. Starting around 200 millimeters from where the edge of the board will go, apply a daub of Jiprock stud adhesive around the size of a walnut to each joist, and then every 200 to 230 millimeters, leaving the area 200 mil each side of the center line free of adhesive, as we will be fixing the board to the joist in this area. Where the end of a sheet is at a joist, do not apply adhesive, these will be fixed with nails or screws alone. Install the sheets at right angles to the joists and nail or screw the sheet to the joists around 10 to 16 mils in from the edge along the recess. Take care to drive the fastener just below the board surface without breaking the face paper. If you've planned a square set ceiling, the edge of the board along the wall should ideally have the recess removed. Make sure you don't drive the fixing through any of the daubs of adhesive. Press the sheet firmly against the adhesive and fix along the opposite edge in the same way. Fasten the sheet to each joist along the centre line either using two nails 75 mils apart or a single screw. At the ends of the sheet, nail or screw at maximum 300 mil spacings where there will be a cornice finish or 150 mils if the ceiling will be square set. For all butt joints, as well as when the installation involves three or more recessed joints across, Back blocking is recommended. 
This will reinforce the joints and ensure a smooth surface. Back blocks are strips of plasterboard that are adhered bridging the joint from behind to provide additional support. Cut back blocks at least 200 mils wide and long enough to fit loosely between the framing members. Apply Giprock back blocking cement to one side of the back block with a notched trowel at right angles to the joint direction. Place the back block with the long edge along the sheet joint edge with half the width of the back block exposed so the next sheet can be installed against it. To prevent the back blocks pushing off, attach them with a laminating screw around 10 to 16 mils from the sheet edge. Fix the next sheet with the recessed edges butted against each other with no gaps. Keep going until you reach the last board. Check the measurement and cut the last board to fit, ensuring the cut edge is at the wall side of the room. Now it's time for the wall installation. Giprock plasterboard is generally installed horizontally, glued and fixed using nails or screws to the wall studs. Check your studs are straight and aligned without gaps or bulges. Prepare your studs like you did for the ceiling installation. Plane back or pack out any uneven members. Pull out or hammer down any protruding nails. Make sure the surface is clean and free of dirt or grease that might affect the bond with a stud adhesive. Starting 200 mils from the bottom of the frame, apply walnut sized daubs of Giprock stud adhesive at maximum 300 mils intervals to each of the studs, making sure you keep the area 200 mils either side of the sheet edge free of adhesive. Where the end of a sheet aligns with a stud, do not apply adhesive. These will be fixed with nails or screws alone. Place a couple of plasterboard offcuts on the floor against the bottom of the frame as packers to keep the bottom edge of the sheet off the floor. Lift the plasterboard sheet horizontally onto the packers and then nail or screw it to each of the studs around 10 to 16 mils in from the edge along the recess. Take care to drive the fastener just below the board surface without breaking the face paper. Press the sheet firmly against the adhesive and fix along the opposite edge in the same way. Nail or screw every 300 mils around the ends of the sheet and any openings. Make sure you don't actually fix through any of the daubs of adhesive. Where the short ends of sheets meet at a stud, nail at 150mm maximum centres or screw at 200mm maximum centres. Drive temporary nails or screws through a small plasterboard offcut into every second stud in the middle of the sheet to help hold it tight against the joists while the adhesive dries. Once the bottom sheet is in, you can check the height of the top sheet and cut it to fit, making sure you keep one recessed edge intact. Fit the top sheet in the same way, making sure the recessed edges butt together with no gaps. If your top board has a square cut edge for a square set ceiling, make sure this goes along the ceiling edge. For corners that project into the room, we use external corner bead to strengthen the corner and protect against damage. Firstly, make sure the sheets are aligned correctly at the corner and trim any overhang with your utility knife. Cut the external bead to length using the tin snips. Fit the bead to the corner and hold it in place with staples or temporary nails. Check it as straight with your straight edge. Then staple or nail the bead through both legs at each end and every 500 mils along the length. Once your ceiling walls and external corner beads are installed, it's time to set the joints. For everything you need to know about setting Giprock plasterboard joints, look for video 4 in the Giprock DIY series.